So we want to look at how to use our calculator to work with complex numbers. So normally, if I am in my standard uh, calculator settings and I try to take the square root of a negative number, I'm going to get an error. In real mode, all, result, all calculations result in a real number. So that's no good. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to change the setting in our calculator by going to the mode screen so that the calculator will work with complex numbers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll down to the line that starts with real. We're going to scroll over to highlight the A plus BI. This is a complex number in a standard form. And if we hit enter, we see that's highlighted. And so now our calculator will allow us to work with complex numbers. So we're going to hit second quit. And now we're back to the main screen. So now if we were to repeat this, we get 2i as the result. So the calculator is now happy. And now we can work with complex numbers without really having to worry about the algebra of complex numbers. This setting will not change the way your calculator works with real numbers, so you can just leave it alone for uh, any future problems that you might be doing. You don't have to change it back. Now recall that the Mandelbrot set is defined by a seed value, which we then square and then add the seed value back in again. And then in repeated iterations, we take the result of the last step, square it, and then add the seed value back in again. So just to do an example with a real number, Let's say I take um, negative 2 as my seed value. Then the first step is negative 2 squared plus negative 2. And then I take that result and I square it. And then I add back in my seed value and then I press enter to keep taking the previous answer and adding back in the same seed value. And you see that this value converges to two. So this value is inside the Mandelbrot set. If on the other hand, I were to take something like um, positive two or positive three in this case, take my seed value, square it, add back in my seed value for the first step, and then square my answer, and add back in my seed value, and then keep doing that. You can see that this number gets bigger and bigger and bigger really quickly, and so this number is not inside the Mandelbrot set. So converges or stays, stays contained, then it's inside the Mandelbrot set. If it blows up, goes to the values go to infinity, um, then it's not inside the set. So let's try one more that's a little interesting, which is the value negative 1. So if I take negative 1 as my seed value, and I square it, and then I add back in negative 1, and then I square that, and I add back in negative 1. And I keep doing that a couple times. What I can see is that the terms alternate between negative 1 and 0. So they're not blowing up. They're not going to infinity. And so this we would say this set is inside the Mandelbrot set because it's convergent. In this case, it's convergent to a pair of values, but it's not going to infinity. Okay, so now let's try it with a complex number. So let's say I want to try um, negative 2, negative 2 minus i. And I want to square that. And then I want to add that back in, negative 2 minus I. So I hit enter. And then I square 
and then I add back in my seed value. And then I do that a couple times. So notice that what's happening to these values is that they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger each time I do this. Generally, we uh, figure mathematically that if the number gets past four, that the number is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we can see that if we keep hitting enter, that's exactly what's happening. Um, now we've switched to scientific notation, so we know our numbers are really getting giant. So this number is not inside the Mandelbrot set, negative two minus i. Let's try something that is inside the Mandelbrot set, or that stands a better chance of being in the set by choosing um, something with fractions in it. So let's try something like um, one quarter minus um, four over seven i squared. and then one quarter minus four over seven i. Now this would be a tough one to do by hand, but for our calculator it's no problem. And then we say answer squared plus our seed value again. And now we just see what happens. So far, the numbers are not blowing up. I'm not sure what they're converging to yet, but they're definitely not blowing up. So this may be an example of a problem that has an orbit in it, in that it's going to alternate between some values that are pretty similar to each other but it's never going to settle down to one particular value similar to the negative one. So let's look at this more co closely. We have a point one five five I'm not seeing that value or something like that value showing up again. How about point five nine? Point five six. Yeah, so this is a weird one, but, oh, there's a number bigger than a one. Four, ah, okay, it finally did blow up, now that it's hit four. It took a while, but now look at what's happening. So when you see the Mandelbrot set, you notice that there are different color coding on things that are not inside the Mandelbrot set, which are colored black. Things that are outside the Mandelbrot set um, have different shadings, typically, and those shadings depend on how long it takes for the number before it blows up. How many iterations do you have to go through in order um, to have it behave like this and finally um, sort of escape. And in this one, this, this particular value took a very long time. So it would be one of the, the shadings, unlike some of the other ones that we were testing earlier, blew up pretty damn quickly. So that one would be 
um, they would be shaded in different colors. So now that you've uh, had a chance to play with calculating with complex numbers and the Mandelbrot set, um, I should just caution you that even in this setting, there are some features in the calculator that the calculator cannot do even uh, with the complex number setting. So if you know how to use matrices in the calculator, your matrices will still, even in this setting, not want to work with complex numbers. So this is not a sort of panacea, but it does allow us to do a lot of nice on-screen calculations uh, as a result. So thank you for listening and enjoy your exploration of the Mandelbrot set.